before I forget, and also so that the uh, first little bit of announcements will be recorded. Make sure that that is okay. Good, we are, we are recording. All right. Um, so a couple of a couple of notes before we begin. Um, uh, I am still in the process of of uh, going over the exams, grading the exams. That's taking a lot longer than I thought it would, uh, but I expect that should be done by tonight. So um, there may be uh, there may be some questions on your exam that are still marked as incorrect, even if you have the correct answer. But I will be going through those and fixing those. It's just a, a longer process than I had anticipated. So I apologize for that. Um, the second thing was for the for the group projects, I was uh, <laughs> I was struggling with Web Campus and I was unable to figure out the submission thing. So um, uh, if you if so, there, there are three ways to submit it. Uh, email it to me through Web Campus. Um, on Web Campus on, on the I believe it's the group page, there is a, a way to uh, upload files, uh, so you can do it that way. Or the third way, which is probably the way that I would uh, recommend, is just sending it through Rebel Mail, since that's the the, the uh, more direct, more easier uh, process there. Um, but I apologize for that; I was unable to get the submissions to work. Um, so if you if you have not uh, if you have not sent in your your project, please do so as soon as possible. Um, Again, th there are those three pro uh, possibilities. Uh, sending, it, sending it to me through Rebel Mail is probably the easiest and most direct method. Um, or you can send it through Web Campus uh, through the email process. Uh, the email um, process there, or if you go to the group page on Web Campus, you can uh, upload it as a file. Either one of those uh, ways will work. Uh, again, I apologize for not having <laughs> figured out the submission thing. That would have made it a lot easier for everybody, but I just couldn't figure it out. So um, I see a question in the chat. Upload in the group page. Um, you don't have to. Uh, you don't have. To, if you submit it as a file upload, you don't have to uh, email it, but. Um, if you want to email it just to make sure that I get it, then that's that's fine with me. So you can send it by email as well, just to make sure that I that I receive it. Um, oh, and, and it looks like people are doing roll. That's good. Let me scroll up and see if there are any questions. Um, and I don't see any other questions in chat. I might have missed those with the attendance going on, uh, but I did want to mention those those two things. So. Again, with the exams, that is taking a lot longer than I had anticipated, but uh, it it is it is still in the process of being done, so that should be done. I'm hoping by tonight, um, probably tomorrow by the latest, uh, but that will be that would be fixed. Uh, and then with the group submissions, I wasn't able to get the uh, submission uh, thing to actually work in terms of the groups. So um, if you can just email that to me if you have not already, um, then if you can do that, I would. I would appreciate it. Uh, okay, so with those with those out of the way, with those two announcements that I wanted to make out of the way, um, are there any any questions uh, questions comments on any of the previous material or in general? Oh, this past Sunday. Oh, thank you. Um, that is actually the third thing that I was wanting to mention and forgot. Good. Um, chapter four. Chapter four. Uh, all of the chapter four homework on Pearson should be due this weekend, not last weekend. And I think I messed up on the due dates on that. So I'll be fixing that tonight uh, as soon as uh, lecture is over. Um, and if you used all your submissions and need more, just let me know and I'll add more submissions to your, uh, to your homework. Uh, but yeah, that, that, was, that was a mistake on my part. So for, for last Sunday, the only thing that was due was the project for this coming Sunday is all of the chapter four material. Um, and if we finish chapter four, we'll also be the uh, chapter four mini project. Uh, any other questions on that or on anything in general? Okay, I'm not hearing any. I know that it takes some time to type in chat. So I'm going to switch screens. I, I'd ready. like to ask a question. Um, yes. our, it looks like our quizzes, uh, our, our quizzes for two and um, 
uh, chapters two and chapters three um, haven't been adjusted yet for the parts that you have to grade. So you have. Oh, have they? Oh, yet um, I I will look into that tonight and make sure that that is that is adjusted. Thank you uh, for letting me know. Um, I thought I had. I might not have. So that might. And I see a similar question in the chat. Uh, so with the mini projects, I, I, I guess it looks like I might not have finalized those. Uh, so I'll have to go in and tonight and make sure that those those grades are adjusted. Um, all right, yeah. So I guess it's looking like in in chat that 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 wasn't done. All right, thanks for letting me know. Yeah, I will I will adjust those mini projects. Uh, and then I see another question. Uh, yeah, so the the uh, Pearson due dates uh, were wrong. Those were supposed to be this weekend, not last weekend. So let's let's actually let me write that here in the notes. Um, hang on one second. Okay, so the chapter four. Oops, need to adjust that setting. There we go. Chapter four, uh, homework, that's the homework and reading checks will be due uh, Sunday. What is this Sunday? March 7th, I believe. Yes, March 7th. Um, and if you need extra submissions, let me know and I will add submissions. That way you'll be able to uh, submit the homework if you already have. Um, okay. Uh, any other questions? All right. I'm not seeing any. Uh, I will keep my eye on chat. If you have any questions, let me know and uh, I'll address those as I see them. Or as I hear them, if you are brave enough to use the, the microphone, that's fine. Or if you have a microphone, I know some some students don't. Um, but otherwise, let's go ahead and continue. So I, I apologize for that. I had thought that the many projects were finalized. It looks like I did not do that. So I'll be doing that tonight as well, um, getting that finished. OK, so let's uh, jump into the material. So we're on uh, section 4B. Um, I think we just barely started this section last class. So we have section 4B, uh, which was on, which is on what? Um, oh yes, compounding. So uh, the, the authors uh, titled this The Power of Compounding. Uh, the main equation that we're going to use here in this, in this section is going to be uh, compound interest, uh, but we have a, a simple interest formula that we're going to get to before that. So, um, and I think, this was also mentioned last class and is is a uh, should have been I, th I think we went through the the definitions first but let me just reiterate this uh, simple interest is interest paid only on the original investment and not on any interest added at later dates so uh, the first one we're starting with is simple interest, which um, is uh, best if you are taking out a loan, but worst if you are investing something. Um, whereas simple interest, the interest is only calculated on the original investment and not, whoop, and not on any interest that is added up to that point. Okay. Sorry, my, my program was lagging there a little bit. Uh, so the simple interest formula is I equals P times R. And in just a moment, we'll discuss what those mean, those uh, variables mean. But I wanna put a box here. For the exam, um, this equation in the orange box will be provided. Uh, it won't be labeled, so you won't, you won't be told this is simple interest. It will, there will be a, 
there will be a portion on the exam. I think this will be at the very front, um, the very top of the exam, since we're on web campus, that will have the formulas uh, that will be provided. Uh, this is one of those, so it'll just be appear in that in that list, uh, but it won't be labeled as simple interest, and the variables won't be labeled. Uh, but let's go over what the variables are right now. So uh, I is the interest. Oh, let me switch that back. I is the interest accrued. Uh, P is the principal amount invested, and R is the uh, annual percentage rate. And just as before with, with other formulas, um, whenever we are dealing with equations, uh, when we have a percent, since this is a, a percent, then we want this to be in decimal form. Okay, so those are what the variables mean for the equation. Again, that won't be provided. The, uh, the equation will not be labeled, but it, what is there in the orange box will be provided on the exam. And that's going to be that way for the, for the equations for chapter four. So um, when we get into the compound interest, that equation will also be provided, but not be labeled. And you'll have to remember what the, what the variables mean. Okay, so let's go over an example for simple interest and applying the formula. So the example we want to look at, if you deposit, let's say, two, uh, $2,500 in a certificate of deposit at a 2.5% annual interest rate, what is your interest after one year. Okay. So for this first example, um, and I'm going to follow this this formula. Uh, sorry, this pattern for the for the rest of the uh, the examples we have that we'll be dealing with equations in this section. Um, what we want to do first is identify uh, well what equation we're using. That's going to be simple interest. Uh, in this example, and then identify what are the variables. So what is I, what is P, what is R, and then um, leaving blank what we are looking for or leaving as a variable what we're looking for. So uh, we know that I is interest. In this case, that is uh, what we want to know. So we don't have that. P is the principal amount deposited. So in this example, that's uh, 2,500. And R is the interest rate, which is 2.5%. And again, we, whenever we are using a percent in an equation, we want that in decimal form. So in decimal form, that is 0 0.025. So that is what we're going to be using. Um, so once you identify the equation and you identify the variables, you're going to plug everything into the equation that you have and uh, Everything that you don't have, in this case, I, you're going to leave alone. So we have I is equal to the principal was 2,500 times R is 0 0.025. Okay, now we plug this into our calculator. I have, um, I have mine ready to go right here. Uh, so I would, I would get your calculator ready to go. For the compound interest and uh, also the formula um, that we're going to be looking at in the next section, I'm going to use the online for, uh, online equation. Uh, sorry, the online calculator, not equation, the online calculator, so you can see what I'm doing. Um, but for a simple interest, uh, this, this formula is not anything too different from what we've done so far. So I believe that you guys will be able to figure that, that out with your, with your calculator. Um, with the other ones, you, you probably can figure it out with your calculator, but I want to be very careful with that and, and show you how to do it just in case there are some that are not, not familiar with it. Um, so let's go ahead and, and do this one. So do we have 2,500 times the 0 0.025 and we get $62.50. Let's round to two decimal places since we're talking about a, a money value, monetary value here. So after the first year, uh, the amount of interest that we get in the account is $62.50. And so then the total, uh, maybe let me write this in a 
in a different color here. So the total would be the principal plus the interest, which is uh, 25, uh, $62 dollars and 52 cents. Although that one wasn't asked for, so that I'm just trying to point out here. Um, any questions up to this point on either the formula or the example so far? Uh, in this case, since you invested it, you uh, you earned you earned it. Yep. So um, we're actually for for this for this course, we're going to be using the. Uh, sorry, I uh, apologize for that. For this course, we're going to be using the simple interest and the compound interest for investments. So how much you, what you earn uh, for investing money, and for the next section for the formula, we'll be using for loans. Um, they are interchangeable, but in this course, we're going to keep it straightforward and just use simple interest and compound interest for investments and then the uh, other equation for loans. Um, so that's a good question. Um, I'm not seeing any other questions that were typed. So I have a question. Uh, how much interest will you, will you have earned after two years? And I'm just talking about the interest, not the total amount in the investment, just the interest. How much interest have you earned after two years? I see 125 in the chat, that is correct. So if we go back, let's go back to our definition. Simple interest is interest paid only on the original investment and not on any interest added at a later date. Oh, good. I see, I see it several times in chat. Very good. So that means that in this investment, no matter what the amount in the investment is, we're only getting interest on the original amount. We're only getting interest on this 2,500, which means for the first year, our interest is 6,250. For the second year, we get another 6250. For the third year, we get another 6250. So after every subsequent year, when interest is added, since this is um, an annual interest rate, it's added annually and added, added to, uh, every year, uh, we we earn only on the original investment, only on the uh, 2500. So we get 6250 more in interest each year. Um, so only the 6250. Um, so that's simple interest, and that's why that is not necessarily the uh, the best to use when we are looking at investments. Uh, okay, so now let's get to let's get let me get a fresh page here. Let's get to compound interest, which is uh, I would say the more uh, the one that we're more more focused on this section. So compound interest, let's just again remind ourselves of the of the definition. Uh, compound interest is interest paid both on the principal, uh, sorry, on the original investment and on all interest that has been added to the investment up to that point. Um, so in this case, the interest that we earn is changing after each uh, compounding period. Uh, so if we get interest yearly, then every year uh, we calculate the interest, uh, not on the original investment, but on the principal amount in, in, the, in the account, uh, in the loan, uh, not loan, sorry, in the investment that we have, we have taken out. So um, I believe I said this last class and I'm just, I'm just repeating this because I know that um, you guys were focused on the exam, on, on the project, not the exam, that was last week, uh, on the project. So I'm just trying to reiterate um, what was said last class. Uh, but with, with, so simple interest, the principal amount does not change. Whereas with compound interest, the principal amount changes every compound period. Um, so the, the principal is what uh, interest is calculated from. 
Okay, so let's look at the equation. So we have A equals P times one plus APR over N to the power of, uh, let's use parentheses, N times Y. And I'm definitely going to include the parentheses there um, because we're going to need to use the parentheses when we type this into the calculator. So this is our compound interest formula. Uh, so again, this that's in the orange box will be provided on the exam. Uh, not, it won't be labeled, so you won't know this is compound interest. You won't know what the variables, or you won't be told what the variables are, you'll have to remember that. Uh, but the equation itself will be provided. Uh, so let's go ahead and go over what the uh, variables are. So uh, A, is the accumulated balance in this case after Y years. P is the starting principle. Uh, there we go. P is the starting principle. Um, APR is the annual percentage rate. And again, when, uh, when we're working with our percents, we want this in decimal form. So uh, in decimal form. Uh, N is the number of compounding periods per year. And Y is the number of years. Um, and there is one thing that I wanted to mention here as a note, uh, the variable y, the number of years, uh, does not have to be a whole number. So for example, if we were looking at uh, one of these investments and we wanted to know uh, what the balance is after six months, Well, six months is half a year, so then y would be 0 0.5. Or if we wanted to know the balance after 18 months, that's a one and a half years, so y would be 1.5. So the variable y does not have to be a whole number. Uh, usually it is for these examples, just to keep things simple, but um, on some occasions it's not, so you'll want to watch out for that. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention with these with these equations, usually with the financial equations, the variables are uh, pretty nice in that they usually mean the same thing. So you'll notice P in this equation is, is uh, the same thing as P in the last equation, which is principal. Um, and that's going to be a pattern that will that will follow through with these financial chapters. So that that's one nice thing there. Um, all right, so let's look at an example uh, applying compound interest. And for this one, uh, we'll be a, because this is a little bit more of a complex formula. Uh, when we use our calculator, we'll we'll uh, show this on the I'll show this on the digital side so that you can see what I'm typing in, uh, and we'll also be a little bit careful on on how uh, how to enter that to the calculator. So the example that I want to look at for this one, let's find the balance. Uh, in on investment, if let's say twenty thousand dollars is invested for five years with an APR of five percent and uh, quarterly compounding, or I guess uh, and is compounded quarterly. Okay. So here we have an investment. We are investing $20,000 uh, for five years, given the APR and the compounding period. Uh, so again, the first thing that I'm going to do, uh, the first thing that I would recommend that you do is to, uh, once we know what we're, we're doing uh, the uh, compound interest formula, You'll, you'll always see that word compounded or compounding 
in the question that will be a, a giveaway that this is compound interest. Uh, once you identify the formula, uh, you identify the variables. So A is the uh, balance. So this is what we want. So that we don't know. Uh, P is the principal amount invested. So in this case, that is $20,000. Uh, the APR, that's the annual percentage rate. In this case, that is 5%. And we want that in its decimal form, that is 0 0.05. Uh, N is the number of times that uh, the number of compounding periods per year. So what is N in this case? If we are, if this, if this investment is compounded quarterly, uh, how many times per year is it compounded? How many times per year? Four times. Four times. Four times. Very good. Yep. So because quarterly, that's uh, four times a year. So in this case, N is four. Very good. And why the number of years this is invested is five. Okay. Uh, once we identify all of the variables, then we plug this into the equation that we have. Let's write down what we get for the equation. So we have A is equal to the principal amount, P, so that's 20,000, times 1 plus the APR, 0 0.05. Again, we are always using our decimal form, divided by N, in this case, is 4, to the power, and we'll use parentheses here, uh, N is 4 times Y is 5. So that is our equation. Uh, let's plug this into the calculator. So first, I'm going to write on the page here how to enter it. And then I'll show you on, on the digital calculator here that I have uh, how to enter it. And then we'll see what the solution is. So what you're going to type is the 20,000 uh, times. And then we'll need to use the parentheses key. 1 plus the 0 0.05 divided by four, and then parentheses. And then we need to do the power key or the exponent key. Um, for a lot of calculators, they use the caret. So you want to look for that. Um, I believe the, the recommended TI30X2S has the caret key that is um, right here, just on the right uh, left side above the buttons. Or uh, some calculators use a y to the x or even an x to the y. And what's confusing about that is it's not necessarily even uh, specific brands, because with the TI, there are other TIs that use the y to the x button instead. So you want to identify what is your exponent key for your particular calculator. Uh, then parentheses. Now we do our exponent, so four times five, parentheses, and then equals. And that will that should give us the amount if we enter that in correctly. So we have uh, going to be using our parentheses key uh, pretty um, twice, it looks like, and then our exponent key. So let's let me switch screens to the calculator here. Uh, there we are. Okay. All right. So um, just going to type it in as I showed. So we have 20,000 times parentheses. We have the one plus, oh, that's not the plus. One plus the APR was 0 0.05 divided by n was four, parentheses. And then this one actually uses x to the y as its exponent, so that is there. x to the y, parentheses, four times five, parentheses, and then equals. And that gives us this number, 23, 27. That is not correct. Hang on one second, let me 
Ah, uh, that should be divided by, divided by four. Nope. All right, let's try this again. <laughs> Sorry, let's try this again. 20,000, I'm not used to the digital version, times parentheses one plus 0 0.05 divided by four parentheses to the power parentheses four times five parentheses equals. There we go. That is better. 25640. So 25,640 and 74 cents. Again, we'll around two decimal places since this is uh, uh, money value. Can you please show that again? I was trying to follow along on my calculator and I did it. I missed something. I did it wrong. Uh, yeah, let's let's uh, let's do that again. Okay, so let me clear that out. Okay, so we do the 20,000, uh, 20,000, make sure, I always want to double check my zeros. Okay, times, and we'll have uh, parentheses, one plus the APR, that's not plus, sorry. One plus the APR is 0 0.05 divided by four parentheses. Uh, and then to the power, so the uh, y to the x or x to the y or the caret key, uh, parentheses, uh, four times five parentheses, and then equals. And that gives us our $25,640.74. Okay. So oh, do you do the do you, you do, do you do the carrot and then do the parentheses and then the four times five and then the other parentheses? Is that how you do that last yes. part? Yes, uh, yes, that is correct. If you do the carrot uh, and then four times five without the parentheses, it's going to give you a, a lot bigger number. Or what? Or yeah, it should be a lot bigger. I think it'll it'll not be the same. Uh, so you need the parentheses after the carrot. Uh, otherwise, it won't be the correct answer. Now, does the computer automatically? just divide the 0 0.5 by four and then add the one in that first section, that first parentheses section? Uh, as long as you'd have it in the parentheses, then yes. That's, um, if, you, if you don't include the parentheses, then it won't. But um, as long as you put the parentheses in the same place where it is on the equation, then it will do it automatically on the calculator, yeah. Okay, uh, but I'm just trying to figure out um, if the division is only of the 0 0.05 or if it's also of the one. Oh, it's just of the 0 0.05. Okay, Sorry, I, I misunderstood the question. So professor, the final answer in five years, the total money is 25,640 and 74 cents. That is correct. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. So let's let's write that down. Uh, let me switch here. Uh, there we go. All right. My computer's being a little bit slow today. Uh, so 24, I forgot what the number was. 24, 25, 6, 40, and 74 cents. So our original investment was 20,000. Uh, so in this case, we got, in that five years, we got $5,640.74 in, uh, in interest. Um, let me ask a question before we move on. Uh, how would this change if, if we were compounding monthly instead of quarterly? This was compounded monthly. What would the change be? The change would be instead of number four, it's going to be twelve. Right. So n would be twelve and not four. Good. What if what if uh, we were compounding weekly? Good. 52. I'm seeing that chat. Fifty-two. Good. Yep. How many how many uh, how many weeks are per year? Fifty-two. Fifty-two weeks. Fifty-two class. How many how many weeks are there in a year? Fifty-two. 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 52. Very good. Okay. Very good. All right. 
uh, and that's section 4b. So for uh, section 4b, the, the main two equations that we have are the simple interest and the compound interest. Um, simple interest is pretty, well, the equation is a lot simpler than compound interest. Um, so I have faith in you guys that you can get that. that. Uh, with the compound interest, it's a little bit more work. Um, once you get used to your calculator, the, the, uh, I would use the one that you're going to use on the test, the non-programming, uh, non-graphing gra calculator. Um, if you use that, get familiar with that, then it shouldn't be too bad. Um, but you want to definitely make sure that you can get, that you get, that you're getting the same, uh, same number as I am, the same solution as I am. Okay. Uh, let's continue then. Unless there are questions. Okay, I'm not hearing any questions and I'm not seeing any typed questions. Um, one thing that I did want to mention, let me just pull out my notebook to make sure that I have this correct. Yes. Um, so for section 4C, 4C I do want you guys to read through because there is a lot of good information there, especially in terms of finances, um, which is you know always useful to know. Uh, but we're not going to be testing on section 4C. So there will be a reading check on it, but uh, no homework and no lecture on it. So we'll have uh, section 4D will be our next section. And then after chapter four, um, there's going to be no extra reading checks. So uh, no extra um, sections to read. Uh, outside of what we do in lecture. Uh, so I just wanted to mention that. All right, so 4D, section 4D. And the authors titled this loan payments, credit cards, and mortgages. All right. Um, so we're going to start off with a couple of a couple of terms, uh, definitions that we like we what we had at the beginning of section four B. Uh, for any loan, the principal is the amount of money owed at any particular time. Uh, so for investments, the principal amount is um, the amount that interest is calculated from. For loans, the principal amount is what you owe, so it's also what uh, interest is, is calculated from. Uh, interest, then, is charged on the principal of a loan at any given time. Uh, so interest is charged, when you take out a loan, interest is charged on the principal amount. The loan term is the time you have to pay back the loan in full. So the amount of time that you have to pay back the loan in full, we call that the loan term. And one more thing here. Um, in this section, again, uh, we're not we're not going too much into depth uh, into the different types of loans. There, there are a lot of different types of loans, um, which the credit cards and the mortgages fall into, I would, I would say. Um, but there's one specific one that we're going to be focusing on in this class, uh, which is the following. That's, it's a loan you pay off with equal regular payments. And this is called an installment loan or an amortized loan. And that is the type of loan we're going to be focusing on in this section. Again, there, there are many other different types of loans uh, but this is the this is the type of loan that we are going to be focusing on. Uh, so let me uh, let me underline these. So we had principal here, we have interest here, loan term, and here we're looking at installment loans or amortized loans. Now um, let's talk about that phrase really quickly: equal regular payments. So the equal bit means that the amount you pay is going to be the same every time. And the regular bit means that you're going to be paying uh, on a regular period. So it could be weekly, it could be monthly, it could be uh, daily, <laughs> probably not daily. Uh, I think usually it's monthly payments, but uh, we can calculate for any type of regular period. 
So let's look at what our loan payment formula is. And so this is going to be very similar to what we had in the previous sections with our simple interest formula and compound interest formula. So we have our loan payment formula. Let me scroll down a little bit so I have some room here. Uh, payment is equal to, now this one is uh, pretty big. We're going to have a bit going on here. So on the numerator, P times APR divided by N. On our denominator, we'll have one minus parentheses one plus APR over n to the power of negative n times y. And there is our loan payment equation. All right. Now, just like with the other equations in this, in the uh, financial section chapter, this equation will be given. It won't be titled, so you won't you won't be told that this is the loan payment formula, and uh, the variables you'll have to remember what they are. But the equation itself will be given on the exam. So I, I believe um, at the very top of the exam will be a, an image that will contain all of the all of the equations. Um, so let's go ahead and look at what each one of the variables means. Uh, although you can probably guess what most of them are. Since again, with, with the financial formulas, uh, the ver excuse me, the variables, uh, the variable definitions don't change. So in this case, payment, uh, well, the PMT stands for payment, the uh, regular payment amount. So that will tell us um, exactly how much we are paying every period. So, and that's going to be given to us in the, in, in the example. So it'll, it'll say, if we pay this off monthly, then the payment will be the um, amount we pay monthly. Or if we're paying this off weekly, then the payment will be the amount we pay every week. Um, P is the starting principal amount, just like what we had before. So P is principal. APR is our annual percentage rate. So just as before, and just as before, because this is a percentage, we're using it in an equation, we want it in decimal form. Um, N is the number of payments per year. So, uh, well, let me actually, let's add a word in here that I think will help connect it with the previous one, number of payment periods per year. So it's the number of times we're paying per year. Um, N in the previous equation was the number of times that we get the, uh, that, that is, it is compounded per year. Uh, so in this case, it's the number of time, the number of payment periods per year. So very similar to what we had before. And Y is the loan term. So that is how long do we have to pay off the loan? Um, and that's uh, in years. And again, just like before, the, the loan term does not necessarily have to be uh, a whole number. It could be um, if, if you're adding it, if you want to pay this off in like, say, four and a half years, then the Y would be 4.5. Although I believe uh, to, to keep things simple, usually the Y is given as a whole number. Okay, so that is our equation a little bit more complicated than what we had before. Um, but still doable. So I'll go over how, uh, let's go over an example on this. So with the example, first thing we want to do is identify what we are, what equation we're using in this case it will be the loan payment formula since we'll be paying off a loan. Uh, and then I identify the variables, plug those into the equation. And then the last step after we plug these into the equation, uh, calculate what it would be using our calculator. And I think I'm going to use a, a fresh page so that I have more room here. Um, okay. 
Uh, so this one is actually example one in the textbook on page 246. Uh, so let's look at what it says. So let's suppose that you have a student loan totaling $7,500 with an APR of 9% and a loan term of 10 years. And so let's find the monthly payments. I'm going to know how much will you pay over the lifetime of the loan. Uh, we want to know what is the total interest paid over the lifetime of the loan. Um, I see a question in chat. Did you post last Thursday's lecture? Oh, I don't think that I posted that on web campus. I did post it on my YouTube, but I think I forgot to link it on web campus. I'll do that uh, right after class. Um, if you don't see it tonight, uh, send me an email and let me know and I'll, I'll definitely get it done. Uh, and then let's see, where are we at here? So what is the total interest paid over the lifetime of the loan? And uh, what percent of the total, um, uh, total amount paid uh, went to interest? Okay. Uh, that's, that's all right. Looks like you got reconnected, so that, that's all right. Um, okay, so we have a, a bit going on in this in this uh, thing. The first thing that we want to do, usually the very first thing we want to do with these uh, with the loan payment questions, is to find out how much are we paying, um, in this case, per month. So here we're, we are looking for finding the monthly payments. So we want to know how much we're paying per month. Um, so that, that's going to be the, the first thing you're going to look for in these loan payment uh, questions is to find out how much you're paying uh, every payment period. All right, uh, let's fill out our things. So the payment, this is what we want to know. So that we haven't been told. P, the principal amount. So the principal amount that we took out on the loan is $7,500. Uh, next we have is the APR. The annual percentage rate of the loan is 9%. And again, we want that in decimal form. So that's going to be 0 0.09 in its decimal form. Next N, we wanna know what are the number of payment periods per year well, here we are making monthly payments, so N should be 12. And then Y is the loan term. So how long do we have to pay off the loan? Uh, this one has a loan term of 10 years, has to be paid off in 10 years. So Y is 10. Okay. So once we have identified all of the variables, we're going to plug it into the equation. So let's uh, plug this into the equation. Uh, that we have. So the payment is equal to, we have the principal is 7,500 times the APR is 0 0.09 divided by N is 12 in this example, divided by, then we have one minus, we'll have parentheses one plus the APR is 0 0.09 divided by N is 12 and this to the power of negative n, so negative 12 times y in this case is 10. Okay. So that is our equation. Uh, now, uh, if you have a programmable calculator, or a graphing calculator, one of the nicer calculators, uh, you could plug this in 
and edit it and see what it looks like just in one go. Um, if you're using, again, our non-programmable non-graphing calculators, it's a little bit more difficult to see what we, uh, what we have input. Um, and with this particular equation, there's a lot, of, a lot of numbers we're inputting. So there's a lot of places where this could go wrong. So instead of putting this all in at, at one go, we're going to break this into steps. Um, uh, the book does this, uh, something similar. Uh, so this is uh, page 246 on 247. Uh, the book goes through uh, one way to break down this equation. Uh, the way that I want to break down this equation is the following. So the first thing I want to do is this little bit on the bottom with the parentheses. So the 1 plus the 0 0.09 uh, divided by 12 to the negative 12 times 10 power. That's going to be our first step. Uh, second step. Sorry, let me let me let me uh, label this as we go along. This is going to be our first step. Second step. I want to do the entire denominator. So that's going to be our second step. And then for the third step, I want to do the entire thing. So the third step. So we're going to break this down into pieces. We're adding a little bit each time. Um, so first, I'm going to write down, like I did uh, on the compound formula, how we would enter this into our calculator. Um, I'll write that out. And then we will switch screens to the digital calculator and do it as class together. Uh, so let's, let's first look at how we would enter this into the calculator. So um, for the first step, we're just looking at what is inside the green box. So for the first step, we're going to type parentheses 1 plus the 0 0.09 divided by the 12 parentheses. Then power is the caret key or the y to the x key, again, depending on uh, which calculator you have, or x to the y. Some, some have x to the y instead of y to the x. Parentheses, going to want to do the minus key, which we'll talk about in just a bit, uh, 12 times 10, and then parentheses, and then equals. And that's going to give us our value. Let me move that down a little bit. And that's going to give us some value. OK. Step two. Uh, so step one is the green box. That's going to give us a number that represents the green box. Step two, notice we're just taking the denominator. So it's going to be 1 minus whatever the green box is. So that's going to be 1 minus, we'll do the answer key that we have for our calculator, and then equals. And that will give us the, uh, the next value, which represents the blue box. So notice um, the first step, depending on how you want to break this up, the first step is going to be the most typing. And then after that, if you use the answer key, it's going to be a lot less typing in the calculator. Or if you don't have an answer key, to uh, save it in the memory and then recall it. And then step three, we're looking at the entire thing. So we have the on the numerator at the top, we have 7,500 times the point not, point 0.09 divided by 12. And then that divided by the blue box, so divided by the answer. So we'll have 7,500 times the 0 0.09 divided by 12. And it's that, so that's our top, the top part of our equation, divided by the blue box. So divided by the answer, which is what we got in step two, and equals. And that should give us our solution. Okay, uh, this is not the only way to break it up. I think the I think the 
the book breaks this down into four steps instead of three steps. Uh, but this is the way that I'm going to break it down. So um, and let me. Excuse me, I have the T uh, TI 30 X to S. Okay, yes. And it doesn't have when you hit answer, you know, when you hit enter, you'll get an answer. Uh -huh. But you can't just put the minus one, one in front of it. You'd have to actually get the answer, write it down and put it in again in the right place, I think, because I don't see any answer key to use. Oh, um, that's that's a good question. Actually, for for this one, they put it in a weird place. Um, let me see if I can if I can show mine. Uh, so this is the 30x2s. It's probably it might be a different color because I know they have they like to use different colors. If you look um, right right here, uh, right above that is a, is blue. It says ans. That's oh. actually the answer key. So and that's the second function. So you're going to hit uh, second here, and then that that button. Oh, the one that has. Uh... The one that has parentheses and a minus and a parentheses. Yes. Answer if you hit the second first. Uh, yes, and that should bring up answer. It should when you when you let me turn this on. Make sure it's on. Uh, when you type that in, it should look like this. Something like this. Sorry, it's hard for me to. Should have the A and S there. Which pulls what you had um, from the last time you hit enter. Or sorry, last time you hit equals. Um, which actually, that also, while we're on that, um, the parentheses minus parentheses, where, where are we at here? This is actually our minus key. So on step one, when we're doing the negative 12, going to hit that and then 12. And it's hard for me to do that mirrored here. Uh, so that's actually our minus key. And so the second function on that is the answer key. Um, Oh, so you have two different minus keys. The minus key in the right column is just for subtracting, but yes. that one down there is for a negative number. Yes, that is correct. Oh, okay. And so well, actually, if you wanted to do uh, two minus a negative one, you do two minus and then the negative key one, and it will look like this. And that, that shows us that when we do the minus and negative, we get a positive. But anyways, OK. Um, any other questions while I grab, uh, grab some coffee? I just have a comment. This, this equation is really <laughs> complicated. <laughs> it is. It is. Um, this, this, is, this is actually, if I think about it, I, I believe this is our most complicated equation that we'll be using. So hopefully that uh, gives a little bit of uh, a little bit of hope. It's not going to get more complicated than this. <laughs> so um, all right, uh, let me let me write this down on a piece of scratch paper so I don't have to switch back and forth what we have. Um, and then we'll go to the digital uh, the digital calculator and go from there. Um, and if you have any questions but, uh, in the meantime, let me know either through the audio or in chat and we'll address those. 12 to the negative 12 times 10. Okay. All right, so let me switch to our digital calculator here. And let me clear that. Okay. <clears throat> And I'm not seeing any questions. So let's do the first bit. So remember the first bit was that, um, what color did I use there? Green, the green box that we had? Yeah, green box. All right, so we're going to do parentheses, one plus uh, 0 0.9 or 0 0.09 divided by 12 parentheses, and then our power, so the y to the x or the uh, x to the y or the caret key, parentheses, our negative key. So in this case, for this calculator, it's that uh, plus minus here. But for some calculators, it is that it is that key that looks like the uh, 
parentheses minus parentheses. So if you see that, that's going to be the minus key. Um, negative 12. OK, uh, times 10, parentheses, and equals. And so in this case, what we get is the 0 0.40793 and so on. Now, I would not write that down. We want to use the answer key because we want this to be, uh, let, me, let me state that a different way. Um, if you round at any point, uh, the more you round, you get what is called round off error. Uh, so if you round to say two decimal places here, and then you uh, put that into the calculator and round that to two decimal places and put that into the calculator and round to two decimal places, then your answer is going to be off. And it's going to be off um, the more times that you round. So to avoid that, we use the answer key. Um, that's, that's why we want the, the answer key there. Uh, okay, so uh, after we hit equals, then uh, that's step one. Step two was the blue box, and for that we have one minus the green box. So one minus the answer, and then we hit equals, and what we get in this case is 0 0.59206 and so on. And again, we don't want to we don't want to write that down. Uh, we're going to be using that um, the answer key for that in the next part. Okay, then for step three, we're doing the whole thing. So we do the, the numerator first, the top part first. So 7,500 times 0 0.09 divided by 12. That's the top part. And then divided by the blue box, so divided by answer. So we divide by the answer key and hit equals. And we want to round to two decimal places since this is our final answer. So $95.01 is what it looks like we have. 95.0068, which rounds to $95.01. Okay. I'm almost afraid to ask this, but uh, how many of you got that same number i was just watching because there's just too much to keep up at that pace can we do it over again one more yeah time? let's do it let's do it one more time uh okay so let me clear this okay uh so for step one we're doing the bottom part in the green box okay so um if you if you did this before, let's let's retry it. If you didn't get the ninety five dollars and one cent, that's going to be our solution. Uh, so let's let's try this again. Okay, so we're doing the green box first. So we'll do parentheses one plus the point zero nine divided by twelve parentheses. And then the uh, exponent key, so on, on this calculator, it's the x to the y, parentheses negative 12. So we do the negative 12 times 10 parentheses. And then we'll hit equals. And before we move on, what you should have is the is uh, 0.40793, so on if your calculator is not rounding. So that's the first step. So are we supposed to save this answer somewhere at this point? And how, how do we do that? Um, so you hit, it, um, I'm sorry, let me, I know the answer to this already, but I wanna make sure we're on the same page. So you hit equals and it has 0 0.4079? Yeah. OK. Um, you're going to then uh, just hit the next key for the equation. So it'll be 1 minus. And then you'll hit second, uh, the minus key, or the uh, pull up the answer key. So oh, okay. you don't have to, for this one, because it has an answer key, you don't have to save it. 
Um, if you're using something that didn't have the answer key, you would have to save it, uh, which would be an extra step. But this one, because it has the answer key, you don't have to do anything besides just go to the next step. Um, Professor, um, yes. how did you put in negative to the negative 12? Which one is it? I, I just um, wanted to make sure. So if you, uh, do you have the TI30X2S? Yes, I do. Okay, uh, then if you look at the bottom here, the one that has parentheses minus parentheses, that's okay. your negative key. So you'll hit this, right. that's, so there'll be minus and then the 12 mm -hmm. and then okay. times 10. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, any other questions? Or are we ready to move on? Maybe I should ask, did, did uh, everyone in the chat, did everyone get the 0 0.407? Okay, uh, would we be able to round this answer to use? Um, so if you, uh, that's, that's, that's a good question. Um, if you wanted to round this to avoid round off error, you would have to, you'd have to type at least five or six decimal points, uh, digits after the decimal. Uh, so it might just be easier to use the answer key, but you could, uh, I think, I don't want to. I don't want to commit to that. It might be. It might be more than six digits. It, it depends on the uh, on the example. Oh yeah. So if you rounded, if you didn't round, if you didn't use, if you used less than, I want to say six digits. If you use less than six digits, then it's not going to give you the right answer. Okay. Uh, let's do the next step. So the next step was then one one minus this green box. So we do, uh, you type one. Whoops. I didn't hit equals. Let me hit equals. There we go. Okay. Uh, then we do one minus, and then you want to hit the answer key. So for the, if you're using the TI30X2S, that's the uh, second button, and then the uh, minus, uh, parentheses minus key. Uh, for this one, this digital calculator, it has an answer key directly here. So I just hit answer and then equals. And you should get uh, 0 0.592062, so on. OK. Uh, was everyone able to get that? Let me ask. Yeah, I got it. I don't know about everyone. Okay, uh, how about in chat? I see one yes, two yeses. Three yeses. Okay. Okay. So that's step two. Step three, we're doing the entire thing. So we do the top part first and then divided by the blue box, which is what we have for the answer now. So we type the top part so we have uh, 7500 times the 0 0.09 divided by 12. So that is the top part. That is the top part of our equation. Then it's divided by the blue box. Well, the blue box is represented by your answer. So divided by and then the answer key. And then hit equals. And you should get... If you haven't been, uh, if you didn't round, you should get uh, 95.0068303, so on. All right, so how about how about this uh, second go? Are you guys able to, oh, good. All right, I see one, one got one and yes. Good. Uh, any other yeses? Hopefully, hopefully yeses. Two, okay. So we have at least two yeses. Three yeses. Okay, uh, so let's go back to our digital paper. Um, this is this has been recorded. Uh, will be uh, posted. So, um, and the unit is dollars. Yes, because so let's go back to <laughs> let's let's remind ourselves what we're looking for. Let's go back to our digital paper here. So if we scroll up, um, we were looking for the monthly payments. So how much do we pay per month if we want to pay off this loan? And the answer that we got is $95.01. So the answer is $95.01 is how much we're paying per month for this loan. Okay. 
Very good. So uh, I think the hardest part here is doing the monthly payment formula. So that's this that we had. Uh, again, this is not the only way to break down this, this type of equation. We can break it down further into more steps. Um, this is just the way that I prefer to do it. Uh, let's get a, get a fresh page here and finish up the, the question. So the next question was, how much will you pay over the lifetime of the loan? Well, we know that we're paying $95 and one cent per month. Uh, we know that we have uh, 10 years to pay off the loan. So we're paying $95 and one cent per month uh, every month for 10 years. So the total amount that we've paid is going to be the $95 and one cent times 12 months. So that's how much we pay in one year times 10 since we're paying this off in 10 years. So we plug that into our calculator. Let's see what we get. So we have 95. In this case, I'm not going to do the digital because this uh, I'm sure you guys can get, especially compared with the last one. This probably seems easy. Uh, so we get $11,000. Uh, sorry, not <laughs> $11,401.50. So that is how much we've paid uh, at the end of the 10 years. We pay $95.01 per month. So at the end of the 10 years, we've paid $11,401.20. Uh, let's see, what was the next question? Uh, what is the total interest paid? Okay, so we wanna know the total interest paid. So uh, the interest paid is the total amount minus the principal amount. Okay. So in this case, the total amount that we paid was $11,401.20. The principal amount is the initial amount that we borrowed. So that is 7,500. And so what we get for that is $3,901.20 uh, $3, is what we paid in interest over these 10 years. And I think we had one more question. Uh, let's go back to the previous page, scroll up to the question. Uh, so find the monthly payments, we did that. How much will you pay over the lifetime of the loan? We did that. Total interest paid, we did that. Percent of the total amount paid went to interest. What percent? Okay. So the percent that went to interest of the total that went to interest is going to be the interest divided by the total. And then this is a percent, so times 100 to get us into percent form. So that's eleven thousand four hundred one dollars and twenty cents. Uh, that's sorry. That's that's the denominator, not the numerator. The the total interest we paid was three thousand nine hundred one dollars and twenty cents. Then divided by the total, which is eleven thousand four hundred one dollars and twenty cents, and times one hundred. And let's see what we get with that. So we have thirty nine, oh one divided by the 11,401 times 100. And I entered that in incorrectly. Hold on one second. Okay, uh, so what we get is 34 point, let's round to two decimal places, 2.2%. So almost 35% of what we paid went towards interest in paying off this loan. Okay, 
Uh, so any questions on this, this problem? So after we found after we found the monthly payment, that was what we did on, on the first page. Uh, we want to find the total amount we paid. So um, we're paying from the first from the first page, we're paying ninety five dollars and one cent per month for ten years. So we can find the total. So we have ninety five oh one times twelve. That will give us the amount paid in one year, and then times ten. That's our ten years. To find the total interest that we paid. The interest is the total amount we paid minus the principal amount that we borrowed. Uh, so we take our previous answers. So the $11,401.20 minus the initial amount we borrowed was $7,500. And we get that we paid uh, $3,901.20 in interest. And then the last question was, what was the percent of the total that went towards interest? So that's the interest divided by the total times 100. And so we got 34.22% uh, um, went towards interest of the, of the total payment went towards interest. Um, for section 4D, there is, there is one more example that I wanted to go through, but uh, we're pretty much finished. Let me just go to the previous page uh, because I wanna say something about this example. This example, is a very nice example. This example has a lot of nice things to test on it. So it's definitely one that I would be familiar with. Hopefully you get my meaning there. Uh, but we're out of time, so let's stop there for now. We'll, we'll uh, start next class with the uh, Last example from section 4D, but we're, we'll be still using the same equation. So for 4D, we only have the one, one equation, which is the loan payment equation um, and different applications for it. Uh, so we'll, we'll do our last example for 4D and then we'll jump into chapter five next class. Um, all right, uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, uh, thank you for coming. Thank you for your patience. I'm gonna try and get all those things fixed that we had. Um, I think, do we have a mini project due this Sunday? I think we will, because I think we'll finish chapter four next class. So we'll have our chapter four homework and uh, our uh, chapter four mini project. Uh, but the chapter five material will probably be due, not this week, but the weekend after. Um, all right, so again, I apologize for <laughs> For those those mistakes that I made on web campus, I'm going to fix those, uh, get everything up to date and graded, hopefully by tonight at the latest by tomorrow, uh, and get your grades updated. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, have a wonderful day, and I will see you next class. Oh, and if you have, let me stop the sh uh, stop share here and stop the recording. If you haven't already, type uh, here in the chat for attendance, um, and that's that's all that I had. So thank you very much, and have a good day.